From my earliest recollection, I had two dreams. The first, to be a pilot. At 18 months of age, I would see a picture of a plane in a Christmas catalog, and from that moment, my fate was sealed. Now we lived in a small town in northern Michigan, where airline service was limited, and no one in my family flew. But my parents loved me, and they honored my dream. That first dream became reality on June 28, 1986, when, at the age of 17, I would take to the controls of a small Cessna for the first time. From that moment, my career took off, and I never looked back. Today, I now fly a three-engine wide-body jet, the MB11. From my perch in the sky, I see the world from a macro view. Whether I'm over the Gobi Desert in China, the glaciers in Alaska. Or the volcanoes over in Kamchatka, Russia. Each place is unique and like none other. That same goes for the human race, whether I'm in Asia, Europe, the Middle East, or even right here in America. Meeting people from all walks of life have opened my eyes and challenged me in my beliefs and what I thought to be true. Many, due to religion, society, or even family. And the list is long. Are unable to live true to themselves. They live in kind of a metaphoric box in which they don't fit. It is painful, isolating, and at times terrifying. I know, because as wonderful of achieving my dream and becoming a pilot, my second dream, my secret dream, has been kept locked in such a box. The first dream you know about. The second. The second was to be the woman you see here on stage today. I am transgender. For me to have the courage to utter that statement has taken me four decades. I was assigned male at birth based on my appearance. I was the firstborn son, born into a loving family who would one day carry on his father's name. But down deep inside, I knew I was a girl. The messages we receive about gender begin from the moment we are born. From the color of the blanket we are wrapped in to the clothes we are placed in, the language and gestures that unfold us thereon, each of these messages send a signal on the expectations of who we are to become. By nature, I was a people pleaser, born out of a Christian family, and taught that one could not be a follower of faith or be gay or transgender. When at the age of ten. My mom would find some of her clothes, which I had taken from the goodwill pile and placed in my closet. Like some girls, I liked to wear dresses and play dress up, but sadly, I could only do so in secret until I was caught. As mom would begin to question me, I couldn't bear to tell her the truth that mommy, I'm a girl. For in doing so, I feared I would let her and my dad down. She would go on to read to me a passage in the Bible found in Deuteronomy 22:5. It says, "A woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man; neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for it is an abomination unto the Lord thy God." An abomination? That was a big word for a small child. It was one that I feared. For survival, I created a false identity, deceiving myself and deceiving others. I became an actor, a good one at that. I would study men that I looked up to—my father, grandpas, uncles, men at my church. I would emulate their actions, all the while hiding my true self. I would go on to date, marry, and then adopt children. I hid behind walls of work, taking on multiple projects from running a real estate business to advancing the cause of adoption, remodeling homes, all the while maintaining my career as an aviator. From the outside world looking in, you would have thought I had it all: material success, exciting businesses and projects, a beautiful home, lovely wife, great kids. But down deep inside, I was dying. There wasn't a day that didn't go by where I didn't bear hiding the truth. And behind all that hiding, anger, lots of it. My self-involvement and narcissism prevented me from connecting with my wife and my children. By denying my true self, I robbed them of all I could give. I became increasingly isolated and alone. That's what living with acute pain does. It isolates you. In secret, 
I would go and begin researching why I was suffering. I would correspond with doctors, scientists, psychologists, pastors, and even rabbis from around the world. Mounting scientific evidence suggested I was not an abomination, but as a person of faith, I was literally being ripped apart. That pressure came to a head on Monday, July 27, 2009. My wife was desperate for an answer regarding my lack of interest in her. My options were grim. I could continue sliding into the abyss of lies, or speak the truth and risk losing my family, my home, and everything that I had worked for. On the other side of our room sat a briefcase, and in that briefcase was a book of documentation that I had gathered over the previous five years of research. As I brought that information back to my wife, I made it very clear I was not prepared, nor had I made a decision to seek congruency, but that I was at a crossroad and I needed help. Three weeks later, she would go and file for divorce. I would go and lose my marriage, my home, and everything I worked for. I was ostracized from my church, my community, and I was accused of being unfit to parent my children. I wound up living in a garage in Alaska. Transitioning from one gender to the other is not for the weak of heart. The uninformed call it gender confusion. No one would choose to make such a drastic change out of confusion. We know who we are. Gender is inherent; it does not evolve. The hardships and the obstacles we've had to face throughout our history, from mockery to discrimination, rape, and even murder, are not the result of confusion. Until six years ago, I allowed the world around me to dictate what life I should lead, and doing so, I failed myself and I failed others. For 40 years, I allowed the fear of losing everything to control my destiny. In doing so, I was living a false, unrealized life, robbed of my full potential. I know I'm not alone in this. Many people are forced to live false and incongruent lives based out of fear. In the end, it hurts all of us. Coming to terms with who I was required a faith, faith in believing in something that was deep, something that was unseen, something much greater beyond. Religion. Not only have I experienced life from two different genders, but I have experienced life from two sides of the mountain. One side is fear-based; it is dark and gloomy, filled with narcissism and guilt. I was disconnected from self and from others. Living a life defined by others creates a depleted, lonely life. The face side, although not always easy, it is liberating. It is one of congruence and truth. Living a life of authenticity generates openness. Relationships are deepened, lives are impacted, and in the end, we all grow. And the greatest for me now, the relationship I have with my children. I'm able to give them the love and support that they need, so that they will one day be true to themselves. When each of us face, become true to ourselves. Whatever that may mean for each one of us, when each of us battles the terror and find the faith to become congruent, then the possibilities for us all can only be imagined. I chased my dream and have been a professional pilot for over 25 years. Chasing my second dream took over 40, but only when I did did my life take off and fly. Thank you. <laughs>